Is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. How would Jesus kill an animal? <laughs> How would Jesus kill an animal? <laughs> that I have no idea. Him saying, I can kill this animal or, oh, well, let's do that again. Uh, that's not good. You kind of have to look into the organizations that deliver our ethical and moral frameworks. Those truly are religions. And it ultimately centers around the question, is there an ethical or spiritual way to kill an animal? Did you find out the answer to that? In your opinion, do you think Christians should expect to be offended by this movie? Well, you know, how do I say this? He was crucified for disrupting the culture of the time. It's easier to cover up the truth than to talk about it. They may be offended and can expect to be challenged by this film, absolutely. What do you expect they will find to be the most shocking revelation of the movie? You only have to look at the incident of the cleansing of the temple. He drove them out of the temple, how to teach and all. Christians are going to be shocked by the full extent of the compassion of Christ, how animals were potentially even a part of his message of love and compassion for all. It was that act that precipitated his trial and his execution. Do they want us activists to be crucified? You have no idea of the far-reaching power of the church. They will stop at nothing to keep this truth from getting out. I think we need to wrap things up. Are you worried at all about potentially violent backlash, you know, Westboro Baptist churches of the world, your Islamist groups of the world. Somebody asked me in a comment, the, the example they used, they said Mel Gibson. Are you worried about the Mel Gibsons of the world? The theologians involved in the film, they have concerns and they've expressed them to me many times. Is there any threat or danger making a film like this? Yeah, you just wait and see. If your films affect people's beliefs, that will make you a threat in their eyes, and industry will move to neutralize the threat. When going against mainstream beliefs, especially religious beliefs, you can expect to be threatened. Mel Gibson, that's a funny one. I hope Mel Gibson sees it. Jimmy Savizel, who played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, recently the sound of freedom all about human trafficking of we have a conversation happening leaning in the direction that we may be able to get him to see a screener of this film the number one industry that supports human trafficking is the animal exploitation industry because they've already figured out how to move bodies around the world it's that much easier to replace it with with human the fishing industry is insane with human trafficking seafood caught in waters around thailand ends up in markets all around the world it's a big earner but one that also comes with a large human cost it's an industry that depends on low-skilled migrant workers from neighboring countries many of them are trafficked across the borders and sold onto fishing boats despite being promised other jobs on land it's not just that they're being made to work hard it's the casual use of violence we're talking to people who have witnessed uh, colleagues, friends, other people on the boats being murdered. They will stop at nothing to keep this truth from getting to You're questioning the lessons and the life teachings of people and establishments with insane power, almost unlimited power. Are you worried at all that the mainstream media turns on you, try to shut down your screenings? They take actions to make sure people don't take it seriously? I mean, it's already happened. There was orchestration to shut screenings down. There was orchestration to put pressure in a threatening manner towards one of the co-directors of the film, of, the, uh, of one of the previous films. And, you know, so it's there, absolutely. We went on this journey with Netflix for a long time. This film was first slated as a Netflix original, but it turned out they had a different vision than we did. This film is controversial, and it is also courageous and compelling. It has to be told as is. The more we went into the story and the deeper, Netflix definitely didn't 
want to go that direction. Netflix, major media, meta right now, we're experiencing problems with meta. There's tons of people flooding our inboxes saying that they can't like or share our posts. But similar to Sound of Freedom, we won't relent. Why do they want to shut it down? Animal exploitation is big business. We're talking about some of the most powerful, profitable industries on the planet. This industry operates on the base of guns, political support, media support, manipulated with money, backed by religious feelings. It's a conspiracy of silence. Nobody talks about it, nobody shows it. There's a lot of ties to every industry that you can imagine. Some you wouldn't even think would have ties to the animal exploitation industry do. Animals are the first form of money. Live stock. The buying and selling of sacrificial animals was what sustained the temple. These are very, very powerful institutions that can lobby and slide money under the table to hush people. I mean, there's literally ag gag laws to keep people from talking about this stuff. Wayne from DXE, a direct action organization that goes and rescues animals. Wayne has just been convicted of one felony and two misdemeanors, simply for trying to help the criminally abused animals at Sunrise Egg Farm and Reichardt Duck Farm. He's in jail and, and facing these charges because we have ways that this is silenced, literally. There's, there's just a lot of money at stake for talking about this. Why would the church want to shut this down? <laughs> Well, the centralized church is a business. I mean, I, I'm as religious, spiritual Christ follower as they come, but I can recognize that there's a business side to the church. Everyone in the Western world's entire life is affected by the church. And Christ, I feel, <laughs> was very aware of that as well. He went into the temple and disrupted the business side of what was going on there. And that's a big part of what we talk about in this film is what was that business? The truth is that the temple at the time of Jesus was a mass slaughterhouse. No one's really talked about what was the sole commodity of that business that Jesus was really challenging. The centralized arms of the church, namely, say, the Vatican, or in, in my tradition, it's the Southern Baptist Convention. It's the second biggest Christian organization in the world. As you'll see in the film, these, these organizations have connections to some of the biggest businesses that promote animal exploitation through their products. If it got banned by churches or whatever, that ideally that's only going to help the film because yeah. it's going to create more uh, interest and intrigue for people to go see it. Looks like the government's working in collusion with the Temple Committee. It's a mafia. Yeah, we have to blur out this guy's face or help him. Otherwise, they're going to kill him. In the movie, to me, it looks like you were in danger more than once. Absolutely. I had many times where I was sweating bullets and, you know, heart was racing, you know, not knowing what was going to come next. One of the most dangerous experiences that we had was going boots on the ground at the God of My Animal Sacrifice Festival. The Festival of Mass Animal Sacrifice begins with tens of thousands of Hindus praying at a temple. As part of the ceremony, devotees wash at a nearby river. Then the festival shifts to a nearby corral where scores of butchers with curved swords begin the mass slaughter. Just two Westerners amongst a sea of four million people all crowding around to do this mass animal sacrifice, carrying knives. A lot of them are celebrating, so they're they're ingesting different, you know, intoxicants, etc. And it was definitely pretty nerve-wracking. We uncovered one of the biggest cover-ups in the last 2,000 years that will transform the course of history and how we look at religion, spirituality, and animals forever. We do go 2,000 years back and do go into the text to really understand really what was going on. The answers that we find are shocking. But even if you're a Christian that doesn't want to go down that road, that doesn't want to question anything about the scripture, if Jesus were living and walking the earth today, what would he be concerned with? When we're talking about an industry that takes 90 billion lives a year, not including sea creatures, Christians should be thinking about how Jesus would be seeing this right now and what would Jesus do right now. We have stretch goals to help support the film reach our goal of 1 billion views. What's your hope for the impact of this? My personal goal with this is a billion people to view it and for all of those people of various faiths to ask that question and really redefine what being a follower of Christ or a Buddha or of Krishna or of Muhammad is really all about. Together, let's make the biggest impact the world has ever seen since, well, 2,000 years ago. 
Trust us, it's gonna be biblical. The release date is still to be determined, but it's gonna be in spring 2024, so it's coming up soon. This film is going to be huge. That's just not coming from me personally, it's coming from seeing what's been happening at test screenings, it's coming from hearing from all of these theologians and for all of the, dare I say, haters, I don't even fully like that word, but dare I say haters out there, contrarians to the message, I trust that it's only gonna make the film that much more popular because you're gonna have to go see this film, especially if you disagree with it, because otherwise you're not gonna know how to talk about it with the people who do agree with it. Buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. Is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? Um, I'll, I'll put it this way, how would Jesus kill an animal? <laughs> it's a question that you know has riddled me for the my entire adult life, so that's, that's what it is. It, and it ultimately centers around the question, is there an ethical or spiritual way to kill an animal? Did you find out the answer to that? For myself, yeah, for myself. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what the world thinks when they watch it.